Okay. Ready? Anything to bring up, to consider, to discuss? Okay. We uh, spent a little bit of time the other couple, last couple days looking at the, a couple different ways to look at coordinate systems. So uh, we can apply those as need when appropriate for certain types of problems. Sometimes it's just experience. Uh, but it's also true that you don't necessarily have to use one and others won't work. The coordinate systems aren't going to change the physics. That's physics, whatever physics is, and the coordinate systems are just different ways to look at the problem. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, what we're going to look at today is what's called relative motion. How objects move in relation to each other. We're going to look at two different flavors of it. One is unconstrained relative motion. We'll start with that. And the other is constrained. The unconstrained is the one you're most familiar with. You've all, you've all seen uh, the type of thing where uh, uh, you'll be in a car looking at someone going uh, a little bit faster than you and, and as you sit there and don't necessarily perceive that you're moving, you see that they're moving and it, it only looks like they're moving a few miles an hour when actually they're moving uh, just a few more out, miles an hour faster than you are, but you're only concerned with the perception of what uh, you have to see. Plus, you've probably all been sometimes sitting in the parking lot and the car next to you starts to move and you panic because you think your car's moving. That's a good example of relative, unconstrained relative motion. So uh, we'll take a look at it here in fairly simple terms. So imagine we have uh, two cars. My car, of course, in the lead. Your car Yeah, that's about the car you drive, I think. We need some origin, some place from where we measure things. As always has been the case before, it's arbitrary where it is. My recommendation to you as we do this is simply two things. One is fix it in place. Don't, uh, we, we could do all these problems by attaching the origin to one of the moving objects or some other uh, completely arbitrary moving object. Or it doesn't even have to be to an object. We could just have a moving origin. We could do all the same problems. All this physics would still be intact. Uh, but it greatly complicates the problem, as you could imagine. My other suggestion, also not required but very helpful, is uh, don't put it between any of the objects, if possible. We'll see in a second uh, uh, how that can complicate things. So just for this, this little bit of problem here, I. Uh, have decided to put the origin here. And we'll call your car A. And so it's at place XA and my car. Actually, my car should be A because A could stand for awesome. I drive an awesome car. We'll call it B. XB. So everything we're going to do, we'll start from that simple fact that now we want to look at the relationship between the two. Where is B relative to A or vice versa? And we'll use the notation 
like that. This is We'll read that as B relative to A in that order. And so for this example, no matter where car A is or what it's doing or how fast it's moving or how it's accelerating or what direction it's going or facing or anything, it sees B a certain distance away in that direction. just how much we can figure out from the, uh, the very values we've got there by finding the difference between the two. Uh, this is a little bit different than they lay it out in the book. What the book writes, it's the same thing, but what the book writes is that uh, XB is X B relative to A plus X A. Very same thing. I just find it uh, a, a little harder to remember because we have to get these subscripts in the right order because it's not the same thing to say that these would be equal if we just simply reverse the subscripts. It's they're, they're equal and opposite to each other. So we have to get the subscripts right. I like to write it this way because then I always get them right. BA, BA, the two subscripts are always in the same order and you won't mess it up that way. This way, I just find it easier to forget which one goes where. You, uh, you might be a little sharper than me. It's not unlikely. So that's what I need to do to, to, to get that straight for myself. But it's exactly the same thing in the book, just slightly different form. All right. Uh, of course, that's not all we want to look at. It's certainly possible that these two are moving with some velocity. I will, uh, I will show them moving in the same direction, but it doesn't matter uh, if one of them was moving to the left instead of the right, then uh, the value that we would find in there would simply have a negative as it's moving uh, closer and closer to the origin. Uh, so none of that is, is going to be of great uh, effect. To figure out what the deal with that is, we simply take the time derivative of this equation, which will give us then x dot, the relative velocity between the two is simply the difference of the two velocities. if you prefer V instead of X dot. Notice what? Let's see. Uh, let's see what this can mean. You're, you're in, uh, what's your car? Your car is A. And since you're all teenage punks for the most part, you're driving, let's say, 80 miles an hour down the north way. I'm in B, obeying the speed limit. Maybe a little bit less to get higher gas mileage. So I'm going 60. You're going 80. I'm going 60. So just to put in these numbers, It's going to look as if I am moving relative to you 
at minus 20 miles per hour. As you sit in your car, you're going to see me coming closer to you at 20 miles per hour. It's it's a, a, a little difficult to perceive that perfectly because anytime you're in a car, you know the trees are going by and you're feeling a little bit of bumping anyway. But if you can, if you can uh, put it out of your mind, that kind of stuff, <coughs> look only at the car in front of you going 20 miles an hour less than you are, it appears as if that car is coming back. That's the kind of thing we're trying to get out of this. That kind, that type of relative, uh, relative velocity. Then, of course, the next step we can take is the relative acceleration, and it's simply uh, the time derivative of the equation right above. In whatever form you want to write. And the very same thing, type of things apply. Remember that if we reverse the subscripts, We reverse everything else. So it's fairly easy to handle, fairly, fairly straight away. Also, uh, shouldn't be too great a surprise, I wouldn't think, that all of this can be made done the same way with vectors. So take 20 minutes, put a vector symbol over everything. And we can then do it the very same business in two and three dimensions. When we get to the acceleration in some detail, there's a, there's a little bit extra that comes into it, but we're not uh, we're not too worried about it yet. Seem fairly straightforward? Okay, so you're ready to do a problem already. determine the velocity, the relative velocity of the drop to the car windshield. So I'll call that D and C. A few other details. Let's see. The uh, Car's going 100 kilometers per hour, and 
and the overhead is six meters. velocity of the drop as it hits the windshield. Of course it will be falling some, but it will also appear to be coming towards the car, even though it's really the car that's moving. Uh, at least in our usual frame of reference, it will look to the driver.
the two together will give us some relative velocity between the two that will make a particular angle with the windshield. If you have one of those stupid boxy cars, like the, that sign and that Nissan Cube thing, windshield straight up and down. vectors, if you do that, then it's just a vector subtraction, and then you can figure out the rest and what it might have to do with the angle of the uh, windshield. Don't forget, if you put down some angle, let me know what it is. So, with 
with that, uh, with what bless you, with what speed does the uh, what's the velocity vector then on the drop at the moment of collision? Established a downward direction, but that's usual, so we'll go ahead with that. It's arbitrary which way we call positive and negative, so negative makes sense. 10.85. Nope. Use precision J. Oh. 10.8 meters per second J. So we want B, D, minus B, C. All right, B, D we've got now as uh, 10.8 meters per second in that direction. Minus B, C. about the right relative length. So that's that's minus B C there. This being B. I just need to do that to, to subtract vectors a little bit better. Or the, the relative to C. That's what it would look like to you as the driver that the drop is uh, what the drop is doing. Questions? There's a, a couple homework problems, a couple sample problems. The type you might suspect a, a plane going one direction and another plane going another direction. You just need to figure out the relative velocities and accelerations using this. It's usually fairly easy to set those up from the problems, and then you just uh, do a straight um, subtraction of the vectors to get the relative result. Any questions? Oh, uh, we have an a exam in here in a week, right? Same thing as, as a strength exam, open book, open notes. Okay. Uh, not much more we can do with this right now in the 
it's unconstrained motion. It's it's just exactly that. So we'll go into constrained motion because uh, uh, usually there's a, a a bit more to do there and a little bit more confusion uh, at the initial start of things. So that's uh, unconstrained motion. That, remember, is the two objects, or more objects it could be, are, uh, are able to move independent of each other. It's uh, not completely so on the highway, because they are supposed to stay on the highway themselves, but uh, the cars can be, the, the objects can be going in any direction. Um, what one does does not affect what the other does. In constrained motion, the objects themselves are directly linked, whether by uh, actual mechanical connection, like a, like a rope or chain between the two, or something else like electrostatic or magnetic uh, interaction between the two. But However one moves, it affects how the other is going to move and respond to changes in motion by either one. Simplest way to set this up is with a, a simple pulley system. So we'll start with the simplest of all pulley systems. A single pulley, single rope with two weights on it. We'll I'll set up everything from here and then we'll take it to more complicated, more complicated system. What we want to do with these type of things is given the motion of one or one part of the system, figure out what the other part of the system is going to do. It's pretty easy with this one because obviously if uh, A goes up at a certain speed, B is going to go down at a certain speed. But we'll set up what we need to do here with this easy system and then make the next step to more complicated systems using the very same idea. Again, in this one, we need to establish an origin from where we measure everything. And again, I make the very same recommendations that I did with that before. Make sure the origin's fixed. You could attach it to one of the objects, but things get a lot more complicated. Also, I recommend it's outside of the two objects. We could put it between the two, but then motion of one in one direction might have a minus sign while the other one's moving in the other direction. It would also have a minus sign. That just gets a little confusing, a little hard to understand. So if we pick our origins at particular places, then uh, Everything's going to be an awful lot simpler. All right, so easiest thing to do, I guess, is uh, we can either set it to the ceiling or set it to right here. It's not going to make any great difference. But what we're trying to find out is the motion of one and the motion of the other by looking at the time rate of change of those positions. And if we want to find the acceleration of one, once we know the acceleration of the other, then we want the second time rate of change of, 
uh, either of those positions. All right, so let's uh, let's add one more thing. Just to get us started, we'll say that that pulley has a length of. Because here's the deal with these uh, these rope and pulley problems. It's all based on determining the length of the rope. You'll see why that's so very useful in a second. So I just want to determine the length of the rope. How much rope did you have to go to, to uh, Earl at Ace Hardware, make a purchase, come back and set the system up? Alright, we've got one piece of rope that's XA long. Then we've got a uh, half one bit over the pulley. So that, let's see, circumference is 2 pi r, so that would be just pi r. That's how much rope just loops over the top of the pulley. Then I have enough rope to get down to x b. Yeah, look right. Simple as that. Here's why that's useful. Remember, what we're trying to find is if we know the velocity of one, what's the velocity of the other going to be? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take then the rate at which the length of that rope is changing. L dot, if you will. Anybody have an idea what that'll be? The rate at which the length of the rope is changing. Huh? It doesn't change. Remember, I buy only the best ropes from Earl. I buy stretchless, massless ropes. You guys don't know that, but I've never bought anything else. So, we know this is going to be zero. Let's take the time derivative of the right-hand side of the equation. Uh, well, the time derivative of xa is xa dot, or va if you prefer, the speed at which a is moving. Time derivative of pi r. You'll have to do, uh, what's it called? Not the chain or the product rule on that. And it's zero, of course. Those are both constants. And we have then the uh, other piece of that. From that, we get x dot a equals minus x dot b. For this problem, any other problem, we're going to have a different answer, but for this well, that's exactly what we expected. If A is moving up at a certain speed, B is going to move down at a certain speed. The minus sign means that, um, well, they're moving in opposite directions, but if, if we actually had numbers in here, it could mean that uh, XB was decreasing. So if I have a positive value in here, XA is increasing, giving a negative value over here, XB would be decreasing. Again, it's just uh, what we knew anyway, they'd be moving in opposite directions. And if we're worried about their acceleration, we're all done. We just take the time derivative of that equation. So, simple as that.
calculate the length of the rope, take the time derivative of the length of the rope itself, and uh, you'll get right out of the velocity of the objects and the problem. So let's do such a problem. Maybe, maybe this will happen this afternoon. We don't know. Let's see. Here's your car. Sad looking little thing that it is. Yeah, DJ, you didn't know I knew what you drive, do you? And you're stuck. So we gotta get we gotta get tomato. You know who that is, don't you? Tomato? Tomato is it? You don't know? You don't watch the movie Cars? With the with the the, the tow truck in it? Gonna come pull you out because you're stuck with that silly little car of yours with the ball tires and you're in the snowbank. Gonna tow you out. Gonna do it with a pulley system that looks something like this. We'll attach a pulley to the front of your car and attach a pulley. to a uh, guardrail there in the middle, just because it's available. And we'll run the cable back and around the two pulleys and then back to the front of your car. So we got a, a wind like that. There's the setup. Got to, got to set an origin, a place from where we measure things. Any suggestions? Here? Sure could. Sure could. Is that a good suggestion, though? Depends on whether you've been listening or not. It's to a fixed object, which is a great idea, but it's also between the two objects because my uh, the tow truck's going to pull you out. We want to know, depending on how fast this truck moves, how fast is the car going to move in response. Don't want it to be too fast. Remember, 
we're uh, we're still in particle motion, so we're not going to worry about this little bit of distance between the car and the pulley. Uh, all that stuff is constants anyway, and when we take the time derivative, all those constants drop out. So we don't have to worry about any of the details. We don't have to worry about how big the pulleys are, or how big the links are, or just where those things are attached. All of those things are constants, and we don't have to worry about them. Is the jar really halfway between the jar? I don't know. Does it matter where it is? Let's, let's, well, let's see. Uh, we've got this piece of the tow cable there, which we could call XB minus XA. I'll put parentheses around it just so we remember just where that came from. That was the top piece there. Then, then we have a, a piece here. Does the length of that piece depend upon where the guardrail is? Yeah, of course it does. If the guardrail was up here, that'd be very short. If the guardrail was way over here, it'd be real long. And so we better uh, pay attention to just where the guardrail is. So we'll call that XC. So how long is this middle piece of tow cable? XC minus X, so we'll add that on. Again, just putting parentheses around it to uh, aid me in understanding uh, what it is we're doing here. That's the second piece, so it's the second set of parentheses. And how long is this piece? Same thing, so we'll just uh, put a two there in front. Plus, uh, there's a little bit around there, and a little bit connected there, and a little bit around there. That's just constants. We don't, we don't, uh, we don't need to worry about it. It's just stuff that's in there. We're going to take the time derivative, and that's going to all disappear. All the stuff that doesn't change disappears. The only thing left is the stuff that does change, which is the amount of rope between each of the. Uh, each of the objects of concern. So you take L dot. Maybe it would help if we rewrote this first in the, the math. We've got XB minus 3XA plus 2XC plus a bunch of constants for rope around the pulley. Is that right? That good algebra there, I think.
we'll have one third the velocity of the tow truck. Tow truck takes off at uh, nine miles per hour. We know the car will move with three miles per hour. And we know in the same direction because there's no minus sign in here to say there that uh, anything other than both of these are going to get longer together or they're going to get shorter together since there's no minus sign between them. Uh, never, I mean, that doesn't have to do with like there's not three pulleys, but I was thinking of it as like like if there's three pulleys, you know, like the mechanical advantage just come down by like three. Uh -huh. like that, but that's different. No, than not three no, that's that's exactly what's going on here. If we did a free body diagram on this and you cut through three cables, you then have this great looking auto of yours with. three times the force on it. Uh, that's the mechanical advantage. That, remember, comes at a price, the price being that it'll move one-third the speed. But that's not much of a disadvantage when you've got a car you're trying to get out of the ditch. What about the acceleration? Who's got that done? Everybody, I hope. Just fall straight out of this. Just take the time derivative of a linear equation. And you're all done. Now we know that the acceleration is one third. Uh, acceleration of the car is one third of the uh, tow truck. Questions before I give you one for your own? I think we've got it all figured out. We'll see. I can't believe you guys didn't even know who Tomator the tow truck was. Why did you know? <laughs> Why did I know? Because I went and watched the movie Cars. I have kids. You are kids. You should have been going. Your parents should have taken. Oh, uh, your parents won't take you to movies. You go home from here, what, they put you back in the closet? Run to the stairs like Harry Potter? Oh, do you know that reference? <laughs> anyway, all right, here's, here's a problem for you. A hard one or a really hard one? All right, hanging from the ceiling is one pulley on a length of length D. Then wind up with it is another pulley hanging from it on a length of length C is our weight and the cable runs like that and over here is our other weight which of course could be could be you. Maybe it's you pulling on that line. Who knows? Call that A. Call that B. And I'd like you to find the same thing we found for the, the velocity of one when the other one's known. And it doesn't matter which. If we know the velocity of B, we know A. If we know A, we know B. Just find the velocity of the two.
set it up however you want. It doesn't matter, we should all get the same answer. A pulley system like that's not going to do one thing for one person and something completely different for somebody else. C, C is the same distance as yeah. C. From what? A. The distance D and C? No, from A to the, A to the top pulley, two pulleys, the two pulleys. A to the top pulley yeah. and that yeah. down to here? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, yeah, I do know. No, it's just they're just somewhere. C is not from the ceiling. It's just that little strap. C, C is just this the strap here.
we have Chuck over here. On the bad side of the room. What? Okay. Let's see. over that's you when you pull down on the ropes because you need to raise this Greater as it would if you were going to pull down. 
XP is going to get short because of the minus sign, which makes sense. As we pull it down, that's going to cause B to go up. If we had the origin in between those two, the minus sign would have been a lot more confusing then because then the minus sign wouldn't tell us, simply, simply tells us here they're moving in opposite directions. If we had the origin between the two, it would have just been a lot more confusing because then the minus sign could mean they're moving uh, in opposite directions but towards each other. All kinds of stuff gets, gets confusing. So we just don't want to mess with that. So put the origin on the outside. Um, redo the problem real quick with the origin right here since that's a fixed distance. Who's done? You're done? What difference does it make? Nothing. All it does is it takes, uh, takes d out of this equation, but that's a constant anyway, so it didn't make any difference. So you can put, put it wherever you want, just fix it and put it away outside of the two objects, which in this case were the, uh, the two pieces of the rope. All right. Do you want to get started on one that we won't finish in time? <laughs> or knock off just a few minutes early. You want to go? Keep going? No, Colin? You of all people? <laughs> Didn't you just ask me to like write your letter of reference? You should say, oh, sir, I would stay forever to listen to you. Since your reference wasn't attached to a $50 bill, which was customary. All right. Any questions about that? We'll look at a more uh, more involved one then on uh, on Monday. Other questions?